Hi, my name is Finn, owner of The Leather Shop in Morrill Bay, California, and today I decided we should uh, do a video showing you how I uh, recover and reupholster motorcycle seats. So today, we've got this one here that a customer brought in. As you can see, it is in dire need of uh, recovery, reupholstery, and uh, we're going to show you how to do it today. I may be pausing the video a whole lot as I'm running the shop as well and still have to answer phones and help customers, but I'll try to keep it all in one continuous video, you know, but without big breaks. All right, let's see what we can do. I've already uh, gone ahead and pulled all the staples with my staple, staple puller tool and removed the, uh, the uh, piece that connects it, bolts it to the bike. So those two pieces off, we've gone ahead and pulled all the staples, often the most, one of the more time consuming parts of a job, of a seat upholstery job. Anyway, so pull off the old cover to the underside. And I also uh, had decided to make the video after I did a little bit, so I went back, put the cover on, so I've already marked off my line uh, for the seam. So how we do that, mark me a center line here, find the center in the front, and find the center in the back, and then I use a somewhat flexible ruler to bend and connect the two. Double check it, put it on the other side, make sure it matches up well. Now the customer wanted to do away with some of the extra seams here that aren't needed on this seat. So all we really need to do, this is going to be two pieces. The seat's going to have the top piece and the side and back gusset is all going to be one piece. So I've marked along here, this is how I get my pattern, so this is the key part of this process that makes it work. Um, my main seam is going to go along here. A lot of seam uh, where they are can be decorative, but also a lot of them are there because they have to be to get a piece of flat material to wrap around a piece of foam smoothly. Now I've gone ahead and put little uh, notches, little marking points along here at the key apexes of the curves and uh, sp evenly spaced along that seam. And I'll show you later how we uh, use that to make sure the pattern matches up and lines up right. So, my method for uh, getting a pattern from a seat like this involves this. This is cambric. It's uh, basically that material you see stapled underneath box springs on mattresses. Uh, I like the white because it is semi-transparent. So when I lay it over those marks that I've made, I can see through it. It bends, flexes, and stretches a lot like leather as well. So if it can make, if it can lay flat over a piece of foam, then the leather will lay flat over that piece of foam. All right. So first step. I am going to cut a chunk of this oversized for the top panel. There we go. Next, to make sure it stays nice and straight, we're going to draw or mark a straight line. And I'm only going to trace half of this pattern. And then we're going to fold it along the center line to make sure that the left and right sides are symmetrical. If I tried to draw this line here and here, it may be nearly symmetrical, but they'll be a little bit off by an eighth inch or quarter inch up or down. And as long as the pieces are the same, it's going to look better. All right, so now we take my other favorite tool for this, and that's this stuff, Elmer's Spray Adhesive. Um, this stuff is basically scotch tape in a can. It's a real light adhesive, very temporary, but holds things in place just long enough for me to get the work done without leaving a lot of sticky residue behind. So I'm going to spray a little bit of that across that center line, and then I am going to line up my center line here, right along there and match the two. Make sure they're nice and straight, and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, we're back. So it turns out if I pause the video too long and help customers, the phone turns off and it cancels the video. So we're going to try to work around that. Also, it turns out in the last bit when I glued this down, I didn't realize that I was too short and wasn't had enough uh, pattern hanging over the edge. So we're just going to rotate this and re-glue it down here with enough material. Cut a new piece of the cambric. Cheap. 
around this time. All right. Got her down there. And we have enough material hanging over this line right here. So now we're going to flip this guy up. We're going to coat the whole area in a light coat of the spray glue. And then we're going to try to lay the cambric out nice and smooth. We want no wrinkles until it's past the line. Then wrinkles don't matter because we're going to cut that off. So you work from the middle and you gently press outward towards that line, giving it a little bit of a stretch because we want that leather to fit on proper when it's nice and snug. Okay, so we've got that all around here, as you can see, nice and tight. Next step is to take your Sharpie and trace those lines that you can from the foam that you can see through the cambric onto the cambric. Start from the center lines where it meets the edge, and then start tracing it all around the edge. going to be a dashed line here because I'm not going to cut the leather. The leather is going to go over that edge and wrap under there. But I want to know where that edge is. And now most importantly, I'm going to go along and mark all those little guide marks that I put on there. There we go. Okay. That is pattern piece number one. Pull that off the foam. Grab another sheet of cambric and start all over with the other piece. And start kind of in the middle here. Kind of drape it over. Again, we're only going to be doing half of this pattern. And then once we put it onto cardboard, we are going to uh, mirror the image that's the same on both sides. So I'll start in the center here. I'm going to hack off this excess so it doesn't get in our way. A little more fun. Now the trick here is it's going to, if you curve it too much to one side, like the left, as I am here, it's going to want to ripple on the side where it meets the top piece seam, pull it too much to the right, and it's going to ripple where it folds under the seat. We want to find a nice, happy medium in between where it's not stretching or gathering too much at either of these two lines along the edge here. Nice and smooth. Go to the front side. Just dab more glue. Nice thing about this glue is once I take it off here and it dries thoroughly and nothing's on it, it no longer leaves a real, as long as you're not using tons of it, it no longer leaves a sticky residue that's going to mess with the seat upholstery when we go to put it on. All right, nice and tight around there. And then just like before, we're going to mark all of the key, uh, all, trace all of my key markings on here all the way around that edge to the front and then the guide marks we want to know where it leaves the seat and then we're going to continue this line a little bit up because this will be from this edge here we're going to go up maybe inch and a half two inches enough that we can grab it and pull it tight for the staples and then trim a little off without wasting any more leather than we need to I'm going to a little dashed line along the edge so I know where that piece is going to be wrapping around to the under the side of the seat and where I need to add a little bit for the stapling. And there we go. That is our secondary piece. Alright, pull that off. I'm going to pause the video real quick and go grab the material for the next step. Okay, we're back here. What I got this time is poster board. Now, first step just like before with the same old Elmer's spray glue. I'm going to give a light coat to this poster board here and then lay our seat piece nice and flat. Once again always work from your center. Key thing here is you want to make sure that what was the center line stays nice and straight and doesn't go all wobbly on you. Alright, nice and smooth out to the edge. There we go. And that is the flat version, half of the flat version, of what's going to fit on this seat. All right. We're going to do, we're going to grab a pen. Certainly I have a pen here. And a ruler. 
Okay. Double check that my straight line is nice and straight. Now, we have to add our seam allowances onto this piece. So we are going to go with about a half inch. I ball it, but I'm going to double check to make sure. Yep, half an inch. So we want to go with a half inch seam all the way around this piece right here. And then continue it off what would be the edge of the seat. I think we need to go about, yeah, about two inches over the edge should be enough. Okay, I'm going to cut that pattern out. Good seat, it's a good pattern. If your pattern's no good, your seat never will be. Hold that across there. And pins always jam up when I'm tracing fast. There we go. Okay, cut that piece out. in those uh, where those notches are. So we're going to take our little, uh, let's see if you can see that here, it's a V-shaped punch. I made it for something years ago, but it works really well for doing this, making little marks to trace onto my pattern. Kind of like that. And I'm just going to fold the pattern over here, make sure it's symmetrical and match those punches up on the other side. Suppose I could have just done this all at once and done both of these at the same time, but I didn't think of that just now. There we go. Okay, next step is to do the same the exact thing to the other piece. However, this piece is on the large side and may or may not fit onto one piece of poster board. So let's see, we're keeping in mind that along this dashed line we're going to have to extend it about two inches. Nice and straight. It can be a little tricky if you stretch this material too much while pulling it around the seat because then the material won't be perfectly flat. Um, but seems like we got it okay. There's not too much curvature on this seat. pretty good at eyeballing half an inch, but I always end up checking it a couple times throughout because I don't quite trust myself yet. Alright, we're going to go about two inches off here. Two inches, two inches. This part doesn't have to be neat and clean, and as long as it's at least the two inches or whatever you need to wrap around, because any excess is simply going to get cut off when you're done. Yeah, we don't want to bring it out four or five inches because that would just be wasting leather. All right. Next, we cut this pattern out. Glue. Extend. Come on. 
fender piece of poster board a little bit and trace her out. These pieces, these gussets, these all wrap around U shaped gussets always end up being a lot bigger than they think they are or than they look when they're on the piece. Actually, I bugs me getting these pieces to, in one solid piece of material because there's all kinds of ends up with a lot of remnant leather that's just, you know, gets cut off of the main hide but doesn't get used in the seat. Um, could split it and put a seam in the back, but that doesn't necessarily look as good. I will, uh, I'm going to pause the video now and start up again when we are at the next stage. Alright, back again. We have both of our patterns for the seat we are reupholstering ready to go. Next step is to cut them out of the leather. For this project, I am using black moto chat cowhide from the Hide House in Napa, California. They're one of my, if not my favorite supplier of leather. They got a bunch of great hides, good prices, uh, wholesale, and uh, and yeah, this is one of my favorites for motorcycles because it's a little bit thicker than my average upholstery hide, and it's got a nice finish and sealed finish on it that uh, resists weather and the elements really well. And my lamp keeps going out because I'm hitting the... Alright, there we go. I'm going to need a pen to trace. Just please let me find a pen. Yeah, pen. Alright. Now, one trick is to find a way to lay out these pieces, of le pieces, pattern pieces, that uh, wastes the least amount of leather. And see, that doesn't exactly fit inside there. It overlaps just a little bit. So this whole section in here eh, might be wasted. Now, nope. here's what we're going to do. This fits just about right, except for this teeny bit here. But this is past that point that I am going to be cut. It's going to wrap under the seat and cut off. So we can lose a little bit there without affecting the pattern. All right. Let's pull this sheet down a little bit here. Flatten it out. Do a second check to make sure there's no less than obvious flaws in the leather, any scars or anything or cuts that we don't want or marks to get in the finished product. It looks clear. So now we're going to lay out our pattern. Alright, this one is going to go right about there. Now in this case, I generally don't trace or often don't trace with a pen because it does leave permanently mark the surface of the leather and it can get into your work. But in this case, all of our seams we're going to be marking are going to be turned to the inside and not visible, so I don't have to worry about it. Which makes tracing a lot easier than using a little scratch all and scratching a barely visible mark into the leather and trying to follow that when you're cutting it out. Okay. Trace, trace, trace. All the way around. Okay. Move that secondary piece. And that was going to fit right, right up to those edges. I'm losing just a little bit much. Let's try if I tilt it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Perfect. That, that works much better. Okay. Much more better. in a bit where each of those little mark points are so I can see them easily and knock them out when we get the uh, next step done when we're done cutting these. So next will be to cut the pieces out and we'll start up again as soon as I get that ready. Actually, let's keep going for right now. Oh, step right. I'll be right back. Alrighty, we're back with the cutouts. We're going to cut out this pattern here and get it stuck together. how far we can get before the uh, phone rings or we uh, get another customer in the shop and I gotta pause it. It's a Tuesday and Tuesdays tend to be pretty darn busy so chances are not good for a continuous finishing but we'll do what we can. Just carefully cutting out all along these seams. try to remove the bulk area of where my patterns are from the whole hide. 
side just to make it easier to cut out. But now I can take the rest of that height away and finish cutting the parts. Then, like before, I gotta go through and knock out all the little notches where my marks are. is to get a little bit of glue. I like to use uh, EcoWeld contact adhesive from, let's see if I can get that where it shows. There we are, EcoWeld contact adhesive from Candy Leather. And uh, pour a little bit of that in one of our condiment cups. And grab me some brush foam. This is also what I like to use for uh, when I'm painting glue or dye or edge coat. It's uh, upholstery foam, one inch thick. I used it for motorcycle seats and I found it makes wonderful little brushes. Alright, so we are going to apply a little bit of glue along the edge. Both pieces. Foam actually makes it nice and easy to put down a real thin, evenly with uh, bead of glue along the edge. Okay, so that one's coated. I'm going to pull out the next piece. Big gusset. Now, this is a contact adhesive, so we put it on wet to both pieces to be stuck together and then we're going to let it dry and once it's dry it will stick together. This particular glue I like a lot because one it doesn't have the strong smell of solvent that a lot of glues have and it's got a really long working time. I can stick this together, answer the phone, stop, answer the phone, go help a couple customers for even an hour or two, come back and my parts will still stick together. I don't have to reapply the glue. Alright, gonna pause the video and come back as soon as it's dry. It usually takes about five to ten minutes to dry up all the way. We'll be back. Alright, we're back. Our glue has dried enough to stick together, so we're gonna take our two pieces, our main seat and the gusset, lay them out here, and we're gonna proceed to stick them together. I'm gonna start with the part that is in the very back middle of the seat. Make sure that lines up with the center mark on my gusset. Stick it together. And now I'm going to go along making sure that the little marks I made on each piece match up with each other, which may mean one side or the other throughout this line has to stretch a little bit to get it to fit. And if that's what the marks say to do, that's what we're going to do. Along. That's got quite a bit of stretch. Usually around the deepest part of the curve is the most amount most stretch you got to give it. On the straight parts, the notches stay very evenly lined up already. Alright, now we're going to pull the bottom on this one. Stretch it 
bit marked in and stuck. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other side. After this, we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and get this piece stitched together. There we go. There we are. One piece all stuck together. Now we're going to see if I can get this camera over to the uh, sewing machine without dropping it and see if I can set it up properly over there and carry our piece over at the same time. This here is the sewing machine. Let's see uh, where we can put the camera. Hmm, that's not bad. Alright, I think that will work out quite well. Okay, I've already got black sewing machine thread in the machine. Brand new bobbin so we don't run out. And nothing worse than that, getting two inches from finishing a project and your bobbin runs out. All right, we're gonna line that up half inch in from the edge, as was our seam allowance, and begin stitching. Um, five and a half is the stitch length on this machine. I don't know exactly what that relates to, uh, but it is, it's not stitches per inch. I know that, and uh, it's a good stitch length for a pulse like this on this machine. gathers up. we got to make sure it's smooth, not sewing any ripples into the leather. over the edge and we are set okay next we need to put a top stitch on this piece I'm gonna real quick check the original pattern to see which side the top stitch was on I'll be right back all right and the top stitch was on the center piece on the original we're gonna keep it that way so I'm gonna bring that over here Lay that piece out flat, fold it over, now we're going to do the other side, be easier. Alright, lay this one out flat, fold it over that way, folding the top piece back over, so I'm sewing through three layers of material here, the top piece is a piece twice, and the gusset piece is going to have one layer through there. And then I just uh, go along pulling the seam tight for two or three inches sewing that two or three inches and just continue along like that until I'm at the end of the seam. Alright, so keep going all the way around the edge. I used to glue the top stitch over to keep it in place, but then I found out that just took just as much time as just going a little slower and folding it over, and uh, it, it looks better when it's not glued over. It's just a more natural look. The way the, the leather folds over looks better, so. And it's less work and less glue, and that's always a good thing. Or at least no more work than less glue. Gather and stitch. And there we are. That is it for this part. The next thing we're going to be doing is uh, fitting it up onto the seat and stapling it down. We'll be right back when we do.
Alright, we are back for what will probably be the last part of the seat. We're going to put the cover we just made onto the seat, so not a lot of contour to this cover. Um, you got to make sure to line it up nice and even to begin with. It's gonna, otherwise everything else will be off. So We're going to find the center point that we made in our little uh, seam mark. Line that up with the center line here and make sure the seam line is along this mark line we put here. I've got my staple gun out, aired up. He's an air old air powered staple gun, probably older than I am here, but it works quite well. Actually, it's probably not older than I am, but it's relatively old. It's been here since I started at this shop. Alright. Just pop two in there to begin with. Nice and centered. We're going to again line this up here. Now, we got to make sure down into that curve right. So we may end up pulling out one of these front staples that we first put in just to hold it in place. Put that up. There we go. Alrighty. Now let's see if we can fold this and pull it tight and nice and even all across. I'm going to start with the sides the seat at the front, pulling it tight across here, both sides evenly, and down, we're going to wrap it around, and I can let go of the other side, I've got this one pinched, staple there, now this one came loose again, so we have to pull it over, Try to get it the same tightness, same distance between the seam and the side here as over here. There we go. Go down. We're going to have to go a little more on this side. Get my measuring stick out of here if I can. Now let's see what that is. That edge is about three and a quarter. here, we got a staple here, now I'm going to go to the middle of that point, pull it around nice and snug, staple. Now do the same on the other side, start from the middle, pull it around a bit snug, flip and staple. Alright, starting to look a lot better, a lot more like a seat now. All right, now we got to take care of these front areas that are a little wrinkly here. Pull it against the table, pull it forward, stretch, flip, staple, this side. Same thing again. <laughs> All right. Now this seat is pretty easy to cover. Shape is almost entirely snug. Now we just got to go around the edges here and clean up all this bit. So, our front staple is in a good position. I'm going to put an extra two in there just to reinforce it. And we're going to take care of this part now, this wobbly, kind of loose bits of material. Here, let's see. I'll we'll start at the point here. Pull it down that way. I have a tendency to overstaple rather than understaple. Uh, 
sorry for the next guy who's going to end up eventually recovering this thing. You're going to have a hell of a time getting these seats undone. But it's better than it coming off. Done right. We shouldn't have to reupholster for a long time. There we go. Kind of gathering it in. Evening out the little bit of ripples that end up in the fabric here. Straight and tight. And every so often, go back to the front side, check it, make sure things are looking even, symmetrical, uniform. There. And we're going to go around afterwards with a hammer and make sure all the staples are fully in place. So there's nothing to scratch the seat. Let's see, we're going to pick that one down there. Or not the seat, scratch the bike to work and talk at the same time. I'm not used to that. <laughs> I think I need to get some more gas in the air compressor. Alright. Alright, we're 
just about the end. I'm going to be putting the last two staples in. there's all the staples and there is our nice recovered motorcycle seat. The only thing left is to take a pair of scissors and trim away the excess uh, bit of leather here. You can see we actually two inches ended up being more than enough to uh, staple through and then cut it off and then your seat is done. Hope you enjoyed watching this uh, video or video series whatever it ends up being of the uh, seat reupholstery and uh, thanks. Again, I'm Finn Hansen at the Leather Shop in Morro Bay, and uh, hopefully I'll be making more videos like this. Bye.